Hi all, and welcome to Lesson 7 Videos. Today we're going to be talking about file management and starting to read data from files, and then we're going to get into some plotting. As usual, this lesson is divided into a few different parts. First, we have loading and saving files to Google Colab. Then we have loading data from those files uh, using readlines in NumPy. And then we have our introduction to plotting. Please take breaks between these videos and take care of yourselves along the way as needed. Part 1, loading and saving files to Google Colab. So far in this course, we've given you all a lot of very simple arrays. So for example, we have np.array123456789. And what this does is it allows us to teach you Python concepts without overwhelming you with a lot of data. But looking at real data is a lot more fun and a lot more interesting and kind of the point of this course. Uh, so we've also tried to incorporate in various examples. For example, we have assignment two, question four, where we gave you this big old NumPy array of real data from a thermocycle graph. Uh, you'll notice that we hard coded it in there to help you do your homework problem without reading in data files. Moving forward, we're not going to be hard coding things in for you. Uh, we are going to give you guys data files, and then hopefully after a few of these lessons, you're going to know how to read them. So what are these data files going to look like? Well, here are some of the most common data file types or extensions uh, that we're going to see in geosciences and oceanography. These are the ones we're going to focus on most in this class. And these ones are ones that we're not going to uh, cover as much unless we get into them in sort of, sort of more advanced topics. So starting with the .txt, this is just an ASCII text file. Uh, basically, it's just line by line of whatever information you want. CSV is a com comma separated values. And you can think of this as sort of like an array where each of the uh, columns is separated by a comma and each of the rows is just a line break or an enter. Uh, then you have Microsoft Excel sheets. Uh, this is just another way of structuring your data between columns and rows and can actually be converted pretty easily into CSVs. And then finally, we have NetCDFs, which is just a way of sort of compressing each of the variables that you have uh, and making the data much smaller so you can share a lot more of it. So these ones that are not covered in this class, probably, uh, we have the JavaScript object notation. Uh, that's basically just dictionaries of data. Uh, so you have your keys and your values like we learned about in the last lesson. And then we have JPEGs and audio visual interleave, uh, both of which are sort of visual analysis things and sort of outside of the scope of this course. If you guys are really interested in learning about these things, uh, let Ethan or I know and we can try and put it on our advanced topics uh, couple of classes that we have some room for. So let's talk about using these data files in Colab notebooks. Google Colab runs on the cloud. So the files that are stored on your computer can't be accessed directly from uh, Google Colab. So there are a couple of options for loading data files in order to get that information in your notebooks. Uh, one is to upload the local files to a runtime. Uh, and this means that you can keep your files offline on your computer and it doesn't take up space on your Google Drive. Uh, and it's good for a, like a fast look just to see what is in your file. Uh, the bad thing is that it removes that uh, file every time you reset your runtime. So every time you reset your runtime, you have to go in and click and find which file you want to load. And it can take a long time to upload those things. Or the other option is to mount your Google Drive. What that means is just to make your uh, Google Drive accessible by Colab in order to read those files. And the pros of this is it's available from any machine if you have an internet connection. So every time you open a notebook uh, and uh, drive together, you can basically run your code. It's also really good for sharing your data so you can uh, loop people in on what you are what you're doing and you can share your code in that way. Uh, the problem is you have to upload those files to, to cloud and sort of navigate that Google Drive file structure, which can get, which can get a little confusing. Uh, and then you, it requires internet to even like look at your data and, and that can be a downside as well. So let's start with uploading your local files for every runtime. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to use a user interface, uh, basically just clicking to find it. And then you can use it in a coding cell. So let's start with the user interface. Here, I have sort of this example notebook. You can see the little Google Colab uh, symbol here, and this test notebook is its name. And you can see your sort of drop down menus. On the very left, you can also see these sort of sidebar menus here. If you click this one that looks like a little file folder, it opens your uh, tab for managing files. And you can see all of these little things. And then in order to use the user interface to upload a file, you actually just click this button, uh, and it'll pop up a little finder window in order to go through and select what files you want to upload. If you want to select more than one file, you just hit Control or Command, and you can just keep clicking multiple files. If you want to upload your local files in a coding cell, you just use this little line of code here. 
So here we have our import statement from google.colab import files. And we say uploaded equals files.upload. And what this is going to do is it's going to output this little uh, buttons here. And you just click the choose file. And again, in that finder window, go through and find what files you want to upload. Notice that this uh, variable name is actually optional here. And what the output is, is it's a dictionary uh, with the key as the file name and then the values as the uh, file contents. So if you have you know, files that are really long, maybe you can skip that uh, giving it a variable name and you can just run files.upload and it'll upload them just the same. You just have to click them in that finder window. Now notice that both of these options require you to manually select the files uh, every time you run this. So every time that you have a new runtime, you're gonna have to select these files. Now, there's another way of loading these things, and that's using Google Drive. Uh, the first step to using Google Drive is to put your files onto Google Drive. So hopefully you all know how to do that, but this is just a quick overview. Uh, you have your Google Drive. If you need to reach there, you can write drive.google.com, or you can reach it via your email. And you have sort of this sidebar here, and you're in your drive. What you're going to have is a bunch of folders and whatever documents you've created. Um, I personally recommend creating a folder just to put your data in. It creates a uh, a sort of neater environment and it helps you find things easier. And then in order to upload files, once you've gotten into that data folder, you just right click, get this menu, click, click upload, and it'll again bring that finder window and you just upload the files you want. So once you've gotten your files uploaded, you're gonna to need to mount your Google Drive to Colab. And there are a couple ways of doing it. The first way is again, use that user interface. Uh, so here you have that same uh, sort of test notebook with the, the Google Colab. And you go again to your files sidebar. And what you can do is just click here and it'll pop up this little permit this notebook to access your Google Drive files. And if you click connect to Google Drive, what's going to happen is it mounts your drive automatically. And you can see it shows up in your files here as drive. Now note that this method only works if you're the only editor for a notebook. So if you're sharing this notebook with people, you can't do this. Uh, but it also means that you don't have to remount your Google Drive every runtime. So it's a little bit more efficient in that way if you are always going to be mounting it um, to this notebook. The other way to do it is to mount it in code. Uh, and this would be what you would do if you're sharing your notebook with other people. So here you have your lines of code from google.colab import drive. Now remember your import statements. Our module is Google Colab and our class is a drive. And we just say drive.mount and we give it the string slash content slash drive. Now this is just the format that it calls for and that just gives it your, your Google Drive. What's going to happen is you're going to get this output of a URL. And when, you're, when you click on it, it opens up something that looks like this and it says Google Drive file system wants to access your Google account. So if you click allow, it brings you back to a, a new page with an authorization code that you just put into this little box here. Uh, and then it mounts your, your drive in the same way that it did in the user interface, and you can sort of use your data. Now, at the end of this, what you're gonna wanna do is actually unmount your drive, uh, and you do that by saying drive.flush and unmount. So after you've loaded the data uh, into Python, you can unmount your drive, and you can work with that data uh, separately. Now, a quick note about file paths. Uh, whenever you have these drives mounted or you upload a file, uh, they're gonna show up in this files sidebar here. So here I've mounted my drive and that says drive. And here I just did a sample uploaded file, seattletide.txt. Seattle so when you wanna access those files to get data from them, uh, you're gonna use its path. So the path for uploaded files is just a string containing the file name, right? Because it's in your file system here. So the file path for that one would be seattletides.txt. And in order to read that, uh, we're going to learn a command in the next video, and you would just put this in as your uh, file name. Now, for the drive, it's a little more complicated. Uh, it's a string containing the file name, preceded by its folders, and then separated by those slashes. So here we have drive is the folder, and then it's in my drive, and it's in that data folder I created, and then it's in this uh, the file name here. So these are the folders where you put it in your Google Drive. So keep track of that kind of thing. And if you get a little bit lost, you can drop down this menu here and sort of find it as you go and then trace your path back. So if you want to read from your Google Drive, this is the kind of uh, file path that you're going to have to put into the commands that we're going to learn in the next video.